There comes a point in everyone's style journey when you realize you just can't wear sneakers and or Crocs year round. I'm talking to you, Doogie. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 23 of my all time favorite boots for the winter with the hope to introduce you to some new cool options for the colder months of the year. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew, what to do, it's nice to meet you. Let's talk boots. All items will be linked down below. All boots can be styled by both men and women. And if you have any additional questions or suggestions, the comment section exists for a reason. So the way that I've structured this video, we're going to start with my favorite boots and then move from the cheapest to the most expensive. And this video is timestamped. So if you want to skip to the cheapest, be my guest. I'll see you there. Starting with my favorite boot aesthetically, we have Danner's Mountain Light boot. The Danner Mountain Light is one of the most important important backpacking and hiking boots to ever exist. Introduced in 1979, the mountain lights blend together materials such as a Gore-Tex lining and a Vibram outsole with an absolute iconic silhouette and overall just a really beautiful shape. I just love the way this boot looks. Now this is the Jound collaborated version and the reason why I decided to go with the Jound as opposed to the general release version which are also great is I like how for the Jown pair the upper of the entire boot is a continuous color meaning that it doesn't have like color blocking it's just one kind of very cohesive looking pair of boots but like I mentioned the general release pairs for the Danner Mountain Lights are also fantastic some of the best things about these boots include the fact that they are waterproof free craftable and lightweight which is in the naming convention. For sizing, it's recommended to go half a size down. In my pair, I decided to go true to size and I just put an insole inside the boots and they fit fantastically. Honestly, they fit great. The only issue most people have with the Danner Mountain Lights is that they retail for a whopping $440. But if you like the look of the Mountain Light, here are some cheaper alternatives. We have J. Crew's Cascade Boots, Jim Green's Razorback boots, and Eddie Bauer's K6 boots. Another one of my absolute favorite aesthetically pleasing pair of boots that I'm lucky enough to own are Maharishi and Freight Cap's collaboration on the, or on what they're calling the jungle boots. Anytime I make a boot video, I talk about these boots because I think these boots are just the perfect example of what classic, good looking, rugged, lightweight, durable, just good boots, man. These, this is what good boots should look like, in my opinion. Especially if you like that more vintage, military, uh, kind of just, yeah, I guess militaristic look. But like, obviously, it's not for like being in the military. It has a very contemporary, very modern, very contextual look to it that just looks good in my opinion. I added red laces to these just to help them pop a bit more. Is actually dyed in a vegetable dye, which just means that the dyeing of the leather and the suede were done with organic materials and therefore is non-toxic and better for the environment. For sizing on these, I ended up going true to size, but the real issue with the Freka Maharishi Jungle Boots is that they released in 2021, so two years ago now, and you're gonna be hard pressed to find pairs of these boots unless you search i did a little bit of searching for you and i was able to find a couple of retailers that still carry i think the green version i think the black version the all black version is a bit tougher to find i like the green version that's the version i got but if you're very interested in these boots i would do your searching now because I mean, these are not going to be a pair of boots unless they reissue them or re-release them that are going to be available, like very readily available, like some of these other boots on this list. It just kind of is what it is. That's what you get when you are dealing with collaborations. The closest comp I was able to find that's more readily available that isn't really a cheaper price point, but it's similar to the Jungle Boots are Filson's Rangeland Boots, which aren't really like the best comp because I feel like, you know, these are not feel like, but these are definitely your hunting boots and... I don't know if you're wearing these for stylistic purposes or like for aesthetic purposes. I don't know. Sometimes there are products that lean too far into functionality and these might be them. But 
I wanted to give you guys the option nonetheless. Okay, let's bang out three more of my favorite boots aesthetically for the winter. First, I know I said it isn't a Drew Joyner boots video if I don't bring up the Frey Cap Maharishis, but it also isn't a Drew Joyner boots video if I don't bring up Suicoke and the Suicoke Bauer boots. This year, Suicoke is reissuing or coming out again with the Bauer boots. I don't think they ever went away. They're the Suicoke Bauer EVAP boots. But now, this year, they added an additional pair that is fire, that is fire, <laughs> called Suicoke's Evab High Lace Bauer Boots. I said that weird because I'm not sure if it's Bauer bo Boots or if it's just the Evab High Lace Boots. Regardless, I have it on screen, the name. Both of these boots are chef's kiffs, man. I, I love, for me, like, this is like... These are the type of boots that get me excited for fall winter styling. Not only do these boots look fantastic, but I think one of the best things about Suicoke is how they've kind of nailed in their technology as it relates to the footbed. The footbed for Suicokes are one of the most comfortable experiences that I've ever had on any model of shoes, whether it be sneakers, slides, mules, boots, uh, whatever it is, Suicoke does a really fantastic job. And I think that the only thing that holds back Suicoke from having better or more mass appeal is the price point. Of course, the price is going to be something that's a bit more elevated for the majority of people. But if you have one wish from Santa this year, or if you can save up enough coin to justify something like this, I think that these boots are awesome. I wouldn't call them something that's like timeless, but they just they just add a very unique look to a lot of outfits. And when people see them, like I think for, for me, at least when I see these boots, they're almost a pair of boots that I imagine that I would want to have, but like I could only imagine them, but they actually exist. Does that make sense? Does that that makes sense. Regardless, I love Sui Cook's Bauer boots. The high lace boots are going to be fantastic as well. Some of my favorite aesthetically pleasing boots for the winter. A few cheaper alternatives to the high top boots is Sui Cook also makes a kind of lower top version of the Bowers called the Pepper Evabs. Very cool boot or very cool kind of boot sneaker as well. Cheaper, obviously low top. Not going to give you the same functionality as a pair of boots will, but if you have a long pair of pants, uh, then you probably could get some of the same benefits if you're walking around in snow or ice and things like that. Another great pair of alternatives is actually Teva's Re-Ember Mid-Terrain. I believe that's the naming of it. And these aren't really this in the same classification as the Suicokes, but I've been um, able to kind of see Teva firsthand and or see see the footwear firsthand, and I actually really like these. They're not boots per se. They're they're almost like a weird mesh between. I guess they are boots. You can decide at the end of the day. I I enjoy wearing them. They're also incredibly comfortable. Different kind of comfort than the Sui Cokes, but these are more like just kind of like running out doing things, or maybe these are everyday wears. It depends on how you like to wear these kind of items of footwear. But those are some alternatives. All right, if you skip to the cheapest section, let's go ahead and start with everyone's favorite pair of boots, the Doc Martin 1460s. The 1460s by Doc Martin are ubiquitous within the culture right now. You find them in youth culture, you find them in streetwear, you find them in luxury, you find them in punk, you find them in so many places. From your run-of-the-mill patent leather, to vegan leather, to pebbled leather, you have the more trendy versions, which aren't really 1460s, but fall in line with what I call the Doc Martin bubble, which are the Doc Martin Jadens. And then you have everything in between that when it comes to all the variations you can get for Doc Martens. And I would say if you've literally never owned a pair of boots, my recommendation, I would give the Doc Martin 1460s a look. It's a great starting place for a lot of people, relatively entry level price point. And if it's still too expensive or you don't like the look of Doc Martens, you don't like the yellow stitching, it's a bit too like cliche, here are some alternatives that are also in the same about price range. Thursday Boot Company also makes some really interesting models. For men, there is the Stomper Boots. And for women, there is the Java Boots. And I think without just getting into either fast fashion or just something that you can go to a local grocery store and buy, this to me is the first step into getting a pair of boots that you look after, you take care of, you make sure the leather's taken care of, you uh, plan your outfits around these boots because you want everything to kind of feel cohesive. That is why I call it an entry level boot. It's because you're trying to elevate your style and elevate your whole outfit with 
these pair of boots, which I think footwear is very critical to doing so. It, it's a big part of the outfit. Now, I didn't know when to add these next boots to the list, but I think I'm gonna do it right now. Let's get into Clark's Wallaby suede boots. Now, Clark's has been in the footwear business for over 200 years. And in my opinion, I think the Clark Wallaby boots are a really fun option that are a bit adjacent to what you might typically think of when you think of a pair of boots. For one, if you're making the transition from only wearing sneakers to now starting to wear boots, I think they're a great option because especially with the suede variant, the suede upper variant, these aren't gonna be as rigid or as stiff or as uncomfortable as the full grain pebble leather or just thicker leather version of boots that I've mentioned previously. Clark's also has an extensive back catalog of collaborations, colorways, and just so many options that you can play with rather than just going with the kind of more typical beige variant colorway that most people end up going with. For the Wallaby boots, it's recommended going a half size down, so you have that for reference. You can probably get away with going true to size. Your best bet is to always try them on in store, but you know, if you have a wider foot, you know what you need to do, go a half size or stay true to size. If you have a narrow foot, go half size down that kind of thing. Okay, for the next two boots, we're gonna be creeping a little bit out of the entry level territory, but I wanna talk about two footwear companies that have been iconic for the better half of the last, I don't know, I don't even wanna put a time frame on it, but I wanna talk about Timberlands and Ugg. And I think the current era of boot focused footwear owes a lot to both of these companies. For Timberland, the six inch boot is an iconic, one of the best boots in the world and one of the best options for an entry level boot if you don't own any boots at all. The cool thing about this boot is that it's been through so many different cultural changes so it's really standed the test of time as being one of the more timeless items of footwear in the world or just in general. It has so many unique and cool colorways, it has interesting collaborations and if you can afford it, if you can kind of hobble and dime until so you can get yourself a pair of Tim's, I think it's an absolutely fantastic option and I don't think you'll regret having a pair of Tim's in your wardrobe. I know I wish I had sooner realized the magnitude of how cool and how interesting and how well-made Timberlands are. For Ugg, there are three models that I think are worth mentioning. The Ugg Classic Mini Boot, the Ugg Classic Mini Platform Boot, and the Numal Weather Hybrid Boots by Ugg. And I feel like with Ugg more than Timberland is when you begin to buy more into trend rather than into timelessness. But I, I say that and I, I kind of have to grab my tongue and rip it out a little bit, as dramatic as that may be, and just acknowledge how Ugg year after year after year, um, time period after time period continues to be relevant among a lot of people, a lot of very stylish people, a lot of people who take fashion into consideration. Now, I would say the classic mini is going to be the more timeless, run-of-the-mill, like straight shot, normal pair of boots where the platforms, they may feel a bit more trendy than they do timeless, but I don't know, man. I think that, man, we people really love platform boots and I don't see them going away for a long time. And I know with the price point on these, once again, we're itching away from being more entry level to being a lot more kind of more premium cost when it comes to boots. So one of the best comparisons that I saw for a lower price point are LL Bean's let me get this name right. LL Bean's Wicked Good Slippers. So that's a good comp for Ugg boots. Before I forget, for Timberlands, you want to go down, I would say, a full size. I made the mistake of not going down a full size, and the, the, the boots, the Tim's that I have, fit massively, and even putting an insole doesn't really help. The only saving grace is that because the Timberland comes up on my ankle so high, it kind of still works, but go down a full size on Tim's. And then for Ugg, it's recommended to go true to size in more fashion or rain boots and a half size down in the more classic models that they carry. And of course, like I said with the other boots, these are gonna be much more readily available. So if you can try them on in store, do that before you buy. There are two classic boots that I definitely think are worth mentioning before the ad break. The first are the Tasmanian born Bluntstone Chelsea boots. There's a reason that this product has existed for over 100 years and is still relevant today. In fact, it's probably more relevant than it's ever been in its entire lifetime. 
Now, Bluntstones are not particularly in my wheelhouse of interest, but I think there's three reasons why people seem to love them. Comfort, simplicity, and longevity. I think the fact that the boots don't have too much iconography or loud colorways, they're simplistic, they go really well with a lot of fall time outfits and just the entire aesthetic and motif of fall and winter, that aids to Bluntstones majorly. These boots are typically worn and worn again and worn again and worn again, so there's a comfort level to them and there's a familiarity level to them that not a lot of other products have. And overall, they just seem to be very, very popular amongst a very particular subset of individuals who just... They live and they die and they breathe the Bluntstone Chelsea, which no more power to you. For sizing, it's recommended to go true to size, so there's reference for that. I always like to give sizing, so yeah, that's what I found online, go true to size. Now, the second boot in the classic boot section that I feel like is worth mentioning are Red Wings 6-inch classic. I feel like I see these Red Wings a bit less and less, but if you talk to most people who are big boot enthusiasts, especially... In the menswear space, I feel like Bluntstones can be kind of incorporated with both menswear and womenswear. The Red Wing boots are going to be more so for menswear, just flat out. I won't be repetitive. The, the Red Wings also have a storied pedigree. They have great materials. They're built extremely well. It's worth mentioning, if you've never seen these boots before in your entire life, there are tons of channels who do a fantastic job of breaking down the relevance, the quality, the purpose, the patinaing, the beauty of Red Wing. And I thought it would be important to mention just because, I don't know, you just can't have a list of boots and, and not mention these boots. Someone's going to get upset at you in the comments, which someone probably already got upset at me already, but it is what it is. Now, I heard that the sizing on Red Wings go a bit big, and my recommendation to you and a lot of people online as well is to go half a size down. Let's get a word in for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you interested in making your very own website for a brand or creative project? Squarespace offers a comprehensive amount of features to make the website that you've always dreamed of. If you want to sell your products direct to consumer or if you just want to display your body of work, Squarespace makes it easy to do that and more. Currently, I'm using my Squarespace website as a hub for all of my content and all of my social media platforms. And if you needed a sign to help nudge you into creating your first website, this is your sign. Visit squarespace.com slash Drew Joiner for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, if you've made it this far in the video, this is probably going to be the best damn section of the entire vid. So kudos to you. Let's rapid fire through some alternative boots that you've probably never heard of before. Starting off, let's mention Oakley's Vertex boots. The aspect that caught my eye with these is the silhouette for one. I think it's really interesting. And also the way that Oakley uses colors and kind of paneling and texturing to decorate the shape and overall aesthetic of these boots. The Vertexes have a really fun blend of futurism and vintage outdoorism. I like the fact that they have a Vibram outsole, which typically denotes a quality outsole, and they're supposed to be waterproof, which is great for the elements of the winter. There aren't a ton of reviews on these boots, so take this recommendation with a bit of grain of salt. I think visually it passes the eye test, but when you get it in hand, it might be light, like really, really light, like maybe cheap feeling. It might be something that doesn't feel the same way as some of the other boots that I've mentioned, especially in the aesthetically pleasing section of this video. So like I said, take it with a grain of salt, but interesting pair of boots. If you're someone who has a pair of these boots, comment down your experience below of this boot, help enrich the community. I would be really curious and I'm be looking for that comment. Now I've held off on talking about moon boots for what it seems like years now. But I think in 2023, it would be remiss of me not to mention moon boots. Moon boots, while not as popular as they were in 2021, lend themselves to individuals who like to be more expressive with their boots and their overall outfit just in general. I mostly see moon boots styled in women's wear and when done correctly, I think it can really be a fun, eccentric, just unique way to have a pair of boots that are a part of your outfit. On the totally other end of the spectrum, we have Freycaps Explore W170 boots. Now, for different reasons, these are a pair of boots that most people do not know about. But 
I have a feeling, and these are on my wish list, so I have like a pretty strong passion for these boots, but I have a feeling when you wear these boots and when you're out and about with these boots on, people will take notice of these boots. There's a such thing as a subtle flex. There's a such thing as like, if you know, you know type of thing with fashion and footwear, especially with footwear. And I think the Explorer boots signal something that appears high quality, but also is high quality as Freycap is one of the most decorated Italian boot manufacturers in the entire world. Yeah, one day, one day, these boots will be mine, one day. Para Boots Yosemite Boot is a great unique alternative if you're looking to elevate your current boot collection. Most boots have a combination of suede, leather, and a water repellent textile. These have that, but what makes them interesting and unique in my opinion is the way that Para Boot has decided to use paneling to accentuate different elements within the boot. I just think, and with most things when it comes to footwear, it's all about shapes, it's all about how it gives off a certain energy. And I just think for whatever reason, when I saw these boots, they gave off a different kind of energy compared to all the other boots that are on this list. Merrell's Moab 3 are touted as some of the most popular and the best hiking boots in the marketplace. Merrell has also had some really interesting fashion collaborations that they've done within the last two or three years or so. I personally own a pair of Merrell Moab 2 Low Gore-Texes and I love those pair of pseudo boot sneakers i don't even know what to call them they're just kind of interesting now these boots are going to be a bit more technical looking especially if you live in a more downtown metropolis type of area but if you live in a place like the pacific northwest or colorado or anywhere it's mountainous things like that i think that these just these go perfectly into the kind of granola gorpy outdoorsy aesthetic which a lot of those places love to Wear. Now, a footwear company that I've been enamored with recently has been Morhas. Morhas is a Mediterranean Scandinavian footwear entity that focuses on classic, beautiful items of footwear. This is their Alpine boot, one of the most exciting new additions to my wardrobe. To me, this just screams like an elegant snow boot. Like, obviously, you have something like the Sui Coke Bauer boots or just other snow boots that are meant to be worn when it's snowing and slushy and gross out. And they perform very well, but like maybe they aren't as elevated. They don't have a more kind of elegance to them. These, the Alpine boots, have that elegance. Okay, true rapid fire here. Here are a list of my final alternative boots, and then we have one additional bonus boot, so let's make sure to stay until the end. I've always thought the Yeezy Desert boot was really cool and a really interesting option. If you want a better pair of Doc Martens 1460s but like the Doc Martin look, look into Solovair's 8i Derby. I've also talked and raved and loved the R Legacy Camion boots. And if you don't like the price point on the R Legacy Camions, which let's be frank, most of us don't, one of the best alternatives I was able to find were Olive Clothing's Henrik boots. So give those a look. And I think Hoka has some great options, whether it be the Tour Ultra Low or the Tour Ultra High. And in general, even though Hoka makes running shoes, because of the thickness of the midsole and just the overall structure of some of these shoes, I wouldn't put it past me to say that you can look at a lot of what Hoka has to offer to maybe consider for winter footwear styling especially if you live in a place that doesn't get a lot of snow or rain it's just cold like maybe consider getting a pair of hokas and start doing some running or something like that <laughs> Oof, did i miss anything if i did please let me know down in the comments if there's any additional boots that you feel like should have been mentioned I gotta know about them. I wanna learn about them. We all wanna learn about them. Comment them down below. Here is the bonus boot if you stayed up until this point. I know my lighting is going off the chis art because I'm using natural lighting. Drum roll, please. If you have an additional $6,100 and you're dying to take that $6,100 and spend it on a stupid pair of boots, I got the perfect boots for you. Look no further than Bottega Veneta's Domenica boots. Now, if I see any of you in New York City or back home in Colorado with these pair of boots on, I'm going to give you about 6,100 reasons why you just made the dumbest purchase of the year. <laughs> uh, it's all jokes, guys, of course. Hopefully, hopefully someone gets my sense of humor, okay? Hopefully one person is just like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, he's kind of funny. He tries. He tries. He tries. 
As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you for me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful, and I do mean a wonderful rest of your day. A bientôt. Peace. Yo, what is good post vid vid? Hopefully you're having a good day today. Here are the fist bumps for the one time. Here's one of them. Bop. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. Here's the second one. Bop. Thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you can ever know for staying to the end of the video. I also want to thank you guys so much for just being there for me with the sponsored Google posts. I know it's not easy to go through sponsored content, but it's a big part of why I'm able to continue to make videos, why I'm able to put so much effort and love and energy into making videos. And so I appreciate the support on that. Podcast is back. New episodes should be out tomorrow as per the recording of this video and the uploading of this video. The way I plan it, it should come out tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, the podcast is called Beyond the Garment with Drew Joyner. I talk to different guests. I have different interviews. I talk about life in New York City. I'm going to do solo podcasts. I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to be talking, man. I'm just going to be talking about life and just everything in between. So by all means, subscribe there, Spotify, Apple, Google, everything. I've had the podcast for years, so everything should be set up there. The post vid vid question of the day. What is the most popular pair of boots where you live? In your city, in your town, in your village, what pair of boots do you see being worn the most? Think about it. Let me know. I think in New York City, it's either Timberlands or Bluntstones, depending on where I'm walking out. But those seem to be the most popular pair of boots. That's what I got. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you very, very soon, hopefully. As always, like I said, peace, love, and positivity. Help me come up with 2024's outro. I need help with that. Love you guys. We'll see you later. Peace.